There is no building, no structure that compares. It is the signature of a city, the defining sky-like sculpture. The IDS Tower is a big part of what makes Minneapolis big time. Just its presence, every day a constant reminder of commerce, of a thriving cosmopolitan downtown. Its shadow is long and encompasses much of what you want to be. World-class architecture, kind of the centerpiece of the skyline. For 40 years, the Fauché was the tallest tower. And for the next 40 years, the IDS has been the tallest tower. You know, there was a slogan that one of the guys coined when the tower was first built. He said, this is a building so impressive, they'll build a city around it. And sure enough, you know, we've got all these big buildings that sprouted up all around it. Because the big boy has some class, massive and immovable, it has stood the test of time. An original idea in the 1960s, it came to life in the 1970s. I grew up with the philosophy that architecture is art. And this is really a cool piece of art that Philip Johnson put together. And it's a one of a kind. There are no other IDS centers in the country. It is the most expensive piece of property to lease in the upper Midwest. The architecture is part of the reason. So too, are the impeccable views. You're used to seeing the IDS from the outside, and yeah. it's just gorgeous. You know, this wonderful glass curtain wall, which reflects the outside. And then from the inside, as you look outside, you get the whole city view. And the great thing about Philip Johnson's architecture, he's got this full height glass. It's not just a picture window that you look out of. It's, it's a continuous ribbon of glass, and he's got 80 of these cut back zogs in each corner. So you can effectively have 32 of these offices on every floor. So somebody gets all this extra view by being here. When you look outside from the upper floors, there is a freedom that goes with it. All that space, a peek at the entire city and beyond. It is magical and it is a space where creativity can flow for someone who works here because of it. Do companies find, I mean, is, is there an employee uh, mentality that goes with having openness and space and freedom and creativity? Do, do they think in those terms if you have a view? Everybody wants natural light. It's good for creativity, it's good for communication, good for attitude and morale, so that's really important. So this is important to, I mean, there's a reason. Absolutely. Yeah. Aside from being having a great view, the view creates something. Huh? Right. The view and just the feel, and you feel yeah. the change of the seasons. I mean, this is inspiring. Oh, yeah. At the bottom is the most communal. The Crystal Court is where the foot traffic flows. And it's all by design and redesign. In 1998, we redid the Crystal Court and added the fountain, the benches, all these things that were Philip Johnson's original intent. And since then, we do a lot of events in the Crystal Court and came up with our criteria. So our criteria is, you know, community, children, and charity. And we make sure that what goes on down there is consistent with one or more of those themes. The polar opposite of that is the rooftop. That's right, there is no place higher. It is the peak of an artificial mountain, and it has function. This is where satellite dishes are rented and signals are bounced and transmitted. Just down a couple flights of stairs on the 50th floor, this is where people gather for banquets. 50th floor, man, you can see a whole lot. You can see Target Field, you can see all kinds of things from up here. And this is where it becomes functional, where you have a lot of events or people come up here for what? Exactly, so a lot of parties take place up here, weddings, bar mitzvahs, corporate functions. Today, the U.S. Bank is setting up and you know there are probably four functions going on today. There are safety issues in a building this big. Some of that changed after 9-11. We have a, a multifaceted team that takes care of all pieces of the property. So you talk about emergency, fire, life, safety stuff. That's important, security. So when major events happen, like 911, what do you do? So a lot of other towns around America closed their lobbies to visitors. In Minneapolis, fortunately, you know, we're not one of those cities. We still have open security, but we talk about this with ourselves and our neighbors. Yeah. You know, what are we doing? How do we maintain security, but maintain freedom also and not be too restrictive? But above all, it is above all. Standing as a beacon of hope and class in the Twin Cities, telling the inhabitants that this is a state-of-the-art downtown. In terms of defining Minneapolis, yeah, I mean, our tenants identify with that. People who are from here certainly identify that. You know, if you're coming from the airport, yes, the cabbie, you know, take me to the IDS Center. You don't need an address. It's just, boom, he knows right where to go. So in terms of definition, it's that standout architecture, that iconic architecture, and all the rest of the amenities, the location, the Nicollet Mall that go with making this a, yep. a great property and the centerpiece of the city. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.